I S U P K. Hey, Shalom, man. It's Priest Kevin in Doha with the I S U P K. And the Commander Journey in Holland, California, man. So, all blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians, subscribe to this channel, man. You want true salvation? You're going to learn from the priests and prophets of the I S U P K, man. Subscribe to that channel. Hit that button, man. And it's there with that. Shalom. The book of Hosea, chapter 3, verse 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days. What do you mean to abide, to live? The children of Israel, which is you, blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians, you are the children of Israel. You will abide, or you will live, go ahead, without a king. You will abide many days without a what? A king, without a king. What does a king do? The same thing Donald Trump does. You understand? Donald Trump finds ways to make America great. You understand? That's, why he's, that's his job. How do you make black people great? You don't even know how to, we don't even know how to begin, why? Because we have no king. You understand, read it again. Hosea chapter three, verse four. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. You're gonna live. The Lord said you're gonna have to go many days and this is a judgment against us. You understand? This is actually a judgment by the Lord against us saying, because we've been disobedient to him, He's gonna have us live, abide, abide many days without a king. Meaning you have no leader. You know what I'm saying? Without a king, go ahead. And without a prince. Without a what? A prince. What's a prince? What does a prince do? The prince is next after the king. Meaning that what? If the king dies, the prince takes his place. I say the prince is what? The future. You understand? So uh, ensure that you always have a leader. Well, he's gonna be without a king and a prince. Meaning you have no leadership and you have no future. You understand? Go ahead. Let him come. And without a sacrifice. Is that a what? A sacrifice. What's a sacrifice? Sacrifice is what the, your, your leaders would do in terms of, with, as Israelites, you know, when we sinned against God, our leaders would sacrifice for us to appease the Lord. Well, guess what? You have nobody, because you have no leadership, you have nobody to appease the Lord. So when the Lord is angry with you, there's nobody to speak for you. You understand? He is taking that away from us as a punishment. Go ahead. And without an image. Without what? An image. Without an image. That's why every everybody can give you their own image. That's why Caesar Bouchier could be your image because you have no image. You understand? Go ahead. 
and without an ephah. Without what? An ephah. Go ahead. And without teraphim. An ephah and a teraphim is two things. That, that, these, are, these are tools that the Levite priests used to use. You understand? An ephah and a teraphim is what your Levite priests used to use for judgment. It was a judgment tool. So if you want to understand what those are, in today's terms, think um, the judge today, what does he use for judgment? What's something he use? A judge uh, today in the courtroom, he uses a gavel. You understand? That's, that's what you can equate that to, a gavel. So because, because we haven't seen this so long, we don't even know what those are. You understand? But what does a gavel do in the, judge, in the court systems? That judge bangs that gavel on you, brother, and you'll never see your kids again. You understand? He'll bang that gavel on you, and you are evicted. You understand? That gavel is a tool of judgment. He bangs it on you, and you're in trouble. Versus for, for the people who he's for, you understand? The people he's here for, the, the Caucasian race, if he bangs the gavel, they got judgment. If they go to him, and they ask for judgment, he bangs the gavel, he says, you, you are rewarded this amount of money for your loss, or, or your, your, your pain and suffering. He bangs the gavel for them, you can see, they can see their children. You understand? But the gavel is always against us. Here, the Lord is saying we would go without a, a, without a tool of judgment. You understand? An ephah and a teraphim is without tools of judgment. So we have to go without that. You understand? Go ahead. God will come. Verse 5. Afterward shall the children of Israel return. After what? Shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. In the what? The latter days. In the latter days. And today, we are in the latter days. You understand? After this, shall the children of Israel seek the Lord their God and David their king in the latter days. What the latter days today? We're in the latter days now. You understand? Give me Matthew chapter 9. You understand? But because we have to go through this, that's why we're marching. That's why we have to march up and down, talk about Black Lives Matter. We've been marching since what, the 20s? And nothing has changed yet? And what we continue to do? We continue to march. Let me ask you a question. What's the definition of insanity? Who knows the definition of insanity? Anybody know what the definition of insanity means? The definition of insanity is this. When you keep trying the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, that's insanity. You, we've been marching Black Lives Matter since the 20. You know in the 20s, you know, you know it wasn't Black Lives Matter. You know what it was? Am I not a man? Right. That was the slogan. It wasn't Black Lives Matter. It was, am I not a man? Meaning that we're men too. It has evolved into Black Lives Matter. We've been doing that since the 20s and nothing has changed. Right. You understand? At what point do we try something different? You understand? They've been killing us since the 20s. Even before. You understand? But at what point do we try something different? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. Give me Matthew chapter 9. Because we have to go without a king, or without a prince, without a tools of judgment, meaning without justice, this is what Christ said. And, and if Christ was to ever if Christ was here on earth right now, right? And he to watch our marching, this is exactly what he would say again. You understand? Read it for me. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he saw the what? The multitude. When Christ saw the multitude, what's the multitude? The sea of people, a bunch of people. Just like we see when the all these protests around the world, they've been doing protests. You understand? When he saw all these people protesting, he saw the multitude. Go ahead. He was moved with compassion. He was, he was what? He was moved with compassion. Christ was moved with compassion when he saw these people. You understand? He looked at these people protesting, begging for their lives, talking about Black Lives Matter. You understand? Talking about, am I not a man? Pleading with the enemy. And he was moved with compassion. You understand? Go ahead. On them because they fainted. Because what? They fainted. They fainted. Meaning they were weak. You understand? Your leaders are weak. You understand? You out there talking about Black Lives Matter. If you knew who he was, you'd understand that Black Lives were the only lives that mattered to God. You understand? Go ahead. Call, call him come. And was scattered abroad. It was what? Scattered abroad. As sheep having no shepherd. As what? Sheep having no shepherd. Had no leader. You understand? What happens to sheep who have no shepherd? They get devoured by the wolves. You understand? That's what a shepherd does. A shepherd protects the sheep from the wolves. 
When you have no shepherds, that's why a knee, a knee can be on your neck. You understand? For, over, for almost nine minutes, a knee's on a brother's neck. Why? That brother has no shepherd. You think the knee could be on any other race's neck? Let's take it away from white people. You think, right now, America, well, since how long, America has been at war with the middle, people of the Middle East. You understand? They actually drove planes into, you know, uh, buildings in America. The Twin Towers. 9-11. You think there would ever be a knee on some Arab's neck on the street? No. Why? He has a leader. You understand? They have leaders. There will be repercussions. You understand? There will be penalty if that happened to them. But us, the minute something happens to us, not only do we not get, get any penalty, we don't even want judgment. You see, it was in the news recently, it made me sick. It made me sick the other day. It was in the news where that, that Karen, as they called him, that white woman at the Central Park who called the cops on that brother, right, who was bird watching, and she said, Amy Cooper is her name, Amy Cooper, and she said he had a weapon on him. They wanted to charge her. They said that she lied, you understand? They wanted to charge her and say that she called the cops and lied and said he had a weapon on him. You know what he said? I don't want to press no charges. I don't want no trouble. She has suffered enough. That's what she said. He said she has suffered enough, meaning that he doesn't want her to get in trouble. You understand? Meanwhile, the brother, Deshaun Jackson, he said the blacks are Jews. Let's see if they say, oh, we don't want no trouble with this. Let's see if the Jew Jewish man says, we don't want no trouble. He said there's Jews, there's no nobody's harmed, nobody's hurt. We'll just let it go. No. Nope. They're not going to accept it. In fact, some Jewish man said, I want to forgive him, but I don't know. I need to hear more. You understand? I need to hear more. Meaning that he values his people enough to want justice. Well, guess what? We need to start valuing our people enough to want justice also. You understand? You understand? We need to start valuing our people enough to want justice also. You understand? That woman who called the cops on that brother, you, do you understand that was an attack on his life? If you call the cops on a black man and say he has a weapon and he's threatening me as a white woman, what do you think the cops are coming to do? You think the cops are coming to understand the situation? Or the cops coming to kill him? They're already fearing for their lives on the way there. You understand? That brother ain't want to trouble. That brother said, nah, leave it alone. She suffered enough. Well, black people, nobody has ever said we're suffering enough. They've always thought that we could suffer a little bit more in here in America. You understand? Read it again. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. But when he saw the multitude, when Yahusha saw the multitude of people, when he saw the multitude that's out there, just like today in all these protests, when he saw them, go ahead, he was moved with, com with compassion. He felt sorry for them. Yahusha would feel sorry for the Black Lives Matter movement. He would look at us uh, marching up and down the street and he would shake his head. He would be moved with compassion. Why? Read. On them, because they fainted. And we're scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. As sheep having no shepherd. As sheep having no shepherd. Yahusha understood. The man you call Jesus Christ, he understood something. He understood the importance of sheep having a shepherd. You understand? He knows what happens to sheep that do not have shepherds. We just spoke about it. What happens to sheep who do not have a shepherd? They get devoured by wolves. That's right. You understand? They get devoured by wolves. And the, Ameri and the, and the black and Hispanic people in America have been sheep without a shepherd for a long time. Right. You understand? For too long. You understand? They've been fighting for civil rights for so long, yet they have no, they have no shepherd. So let me give you an example. I'm going to give you an example, right? I'm going to give you an example. And what the brother is saying, so right, how is the black people, how we fight for rights, fight for rights. But other people, other people benefit from fighting rights. Like we fought for rights, and we fought for the civil rights, and the right, to, and the right for vote, and the right for voting. When we originally, when we originally fought for civil rights, it was to get equal pay, man. Right. We were getting paid less, but we were doing the same work as the white man. So we, all we wanted was equal pay. But then, but then it got hijacked by the white man. He hired Uncle Tom's, and those Uncle Tom's came, came, and, and, and tried to, and, and tried to influence us to integrate with our enemy. And once we integrated our money, once we integrated, black businesses went away and black money integrated into white pockets, man. But guess what? The white, the white murders did not, the whites did not stop murdering the blacks. 
Right. The whites did not stop hating the black uh, the blacks, even though while even though black money integrated into black into white business. Now now they, and, and they're doing it again. We're running around saying Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. You're not even paying no attention. Guess who's just like just like the Chinese and the Arabs own gas stations. They got that from benefiting from the civil rights movement. Right. Guess who was going? Guess guess who's benefiting from the Black Lives movement? The homosexuals. Look at look at this poster right here on this wall. There, there's a black there's a black fist with a rainbow fist. The homosexuals is coming right up on the Black Lives right. Movement, and we're not even seeing it, man. And watch, watch when this thing is over. How much the homosexual the homosexual already got rights. They already can go into any bathroom. Like they got universe. You know you can't judge them. They can go in the bathroom with little girls and little boys. You can't. There was never a sign that said straight people only, man. But uh, but there was a sign for there was a sign that said whites only. Right. And it, and they, they build bisexual bathroom, transsexual bathroom, universe bathroom, everybody bathroom. Right. Little boy, little boy, little boy, little girl, big grown man. It's, it's, it's crazy, man. The, watch after this Black Lives Movement, how you not, we're not gonna benefit, but the homose but the homosexuals will benefit from the Black Lives Movement. Just like 50 years ago, 60 years ago, when we marched for the right to vote and what they marched for equal pay, how now the Chinese benefit and how they got carryouts in every black neighborhood. Right. And now how the Africans own U Street when blacks used to own U Street. Go ahead, brother. Look at that piece of hair, man. Look at that piece of profit in your head. You understand? What he says is absolutely right. You understand? Because without leadership, without real leadership, let me give you an example, right? They were, they were having a protest a, a, a month ago. So we went out to, to D.C. We went out and we wanted to know, we was asking people in the protest, because we wanted to know, what do you want out of this protest? And by the time we finished asking questions, not, not two people wanted the same thing. Everybody wants something different. You understand? Why? Because you are a sheep without a shepherd. You understand? You have no leadership. Without leadership, then there's no objective. You understand? There's no objective to achieve. You understand? Read it again. Come. It's Matthew 9, 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. We're as sheep with no shepherd. You understand? That's what happens at the protest. At the protest, we are as sheep without a shepherd. Everybody's there for their own cause. Everybody's there of adrenaline. But if you were to ask and stop somebody who's protesting, stop five people. Ask them each, out of this protest, what do you want to achieve? You have five different answers. You understand? You have five different answers because everybody's there for their own reasons. You have somebody in the protest who turn around and tell you, well, at this Black Lives Matter, I want gay rights. You understand? You have somebody who, who's gonna tell you, in fact, a white person will be at the Black Lives Matter. Why is he there? He wants Trump out of office. You understand? It no longer belongs to, oh, well, we want to be stopped being killed. You understand? They want something, everybody wants something different. And without leadership to keep everybody, imagine, I'm gonna give you another example. Imagine America going to war with no generals, no leaders. You understand? You just drop troop, troopers off anywhere you want and tell them we're at war. They would lose. Why would they lose? Because they had no objective. You understand? There's no points to attack. There's no points to defend. It was just everybody doing their own thing. And that's the key to failure. Give me Jeremiah 14 2. Give me Jeremiah 14 2. This is what God said regarding black people in America here, man. This is what God has said regarding black people, blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians in the, here in America. You understand? Give me Jeremiah 14 2. Read loud for me. The book of Jeremiah 14 and 2. Judah mourner, Jews, Judah. Judah is, is, Jews is short for Judah. Judah being you, black people. Judah is, a, is one of the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? Judah mourneth, meaning what? The Jews are in mourning. Those fake Jews you see overseas, they're not the real Jews. You understand? That Jewish man is not the real Jew. You are the real Jew. You fit all the plagues that were, come, that were said to come on the Jews according to the Bible. And this is what God said. Read one more time from the top. Here we come. Judah mourning. Judah mourneth. You understand? Black people are in mourning. That's why we walk into about some, we, we're marching, talk about Black Lives Matter. 
That's, that's why we're pleading. That's why we're begging for our lives in the streets. That's why we're being evicted out of our homes. That's why we're the last hired and first fired. Judah Morning. Go ahead. Brother McCarr. And the gates thereof language. What? The gates thereof language. The gates. What the gates? What do gates do? The gates protect the establishment. You understand? The more powerful the gates, the harder it is to get around. You understand? The gates are language. What does what does it mean to be language? Destroyed. You understand? Weak. Feeble. That's what language means. You understand? The gates are language. Who, is, who are the gates? Their leaders. You understand? The people who are supposed to protect you. You understand? They, they, they're supposed to be your gates. You understand? Your leaders. Your religious leaders. Your, your, your politicians. Your black leaders. Their language. You understand? Go ahead. They are black. They are what? They are black. They are black. That's you, black man. That's you, this black man. They are black. Go ahead. Unto the ground. Unto what? Unto the ground. And the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. And the what? The cry of Jerusalem is gone up. The cry of Jerusalem. Who's Jerusalem? You. That's your hometown. The cry of Jerusalem is going up. What cry? The cry that you cried when you saw that black man with a knee on his neck for nine minutes. Damn near nine minutes. That cry is going up. His cry went up. His last breaths went up to the Lord. You understand? He was crying for his, that grown man was crying for his mom out there, man. You understand? His life was flashing before his eyes. And he was helpless. The, the people who stood there and watched were helpless to help that brother. As much as they wanted to help him, they could not. You understand? But their cries went up also. The cries of his wife and his children are going up. Go ahead. Come on, come. And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. Give me, um, give me Matthew chapter 6. You understand? We're in a horrible situation, black man, Hispanic man, Native American man, woman. You understand? We're in a horrible situation. Now, what we need to do is we need real solutions. You understand? We need real solutions. You understand? We don't want to hear no, you know, Black Lives Matter, let's join hands. We've been doing that since the 20s, man. It has not worked. Again, what's the definition of insanity? Trying the same thing over and over again and hoping for a different result. We have not seen a different result. You understand? But Christ, Jesus Christ, the man you know as Jesus Christ, told us, told us what to look for. You understand? <laughs> Trying to find something to follow Had loyalty, every man tried to borrow Felt pain and a lot of sorrow Got betrayed, so packed I didn't even have my heart broke Living confused, about to lose hope Cops got me on the side of the road Like a sideshow, need an antidote before I croak Now I'm setting fire to rhythm man blues Call this guitar smoke Rebel with no cause, trying to find direction The world got me vexed Picked up a bad lick of habit that's hereditary from oppression Felt like my life was on fire trying to find an exit Now look, 10 G's plus a good wreck Sometimes a follower is a soldier Trying to find a good shepherd Plus when you in hell, how do you excel? With them the breath of life, I don't believe in fairy tale Listen well to what I tell No calling can cause pain Something that a rebel knows very well can't you tell I was sent from the Lord? Got a tongue like a two-edged sword.